to you who are in the sanctuary, to you who are worshiping via live streaming, we greet you in the majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And we say good morning to you. Can you put your hands together? This is the day the Lord has made. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And we are here ready to participate and to worship, whether it be inside the sanctuary or at home, viewing by live streaming. We are delighted to be able to worship one more time. Amen? Amen. Our God is awesome. He is wonderful. And he is worthy to be praised. We shall begin this morning with prayer. Let us pause for the morning invocation. Our God, Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we bow this morning with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for allowing us, O oh God, to be able to participate and worship together as a church family one more time, Lord, whether it be inside the sanctuary or whether it be using our devices, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for this church called Union. We thank you for every guest that may be with us. We thank you, Lord, and we ask that you would just move in a mighty way upon the lives of all of your people. Oh God, Lord, we, we just ask that you would continue to provide your healing, your strength, oh God. Certainly salvation, Lord. All of your provision and your protection, Lord. We worship you today because you are God and besides thee there is no other. We declare our love for you, O oh God. We are so thankful that you look beyond each and every one of our faults and you see all of our needs. O oh Lord, as we come this morning, we come confessing our sins and shortcomings for we recognize, O oh God, that there are many. We ask that you forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we've come, oh God, we desire to commune with you today. So have your way, Lord, through this service. We pray for the man of God, our pastor, who will stand and proclaim your word. May you anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. We ask that you will strengthen him, oh God, and give us all ears to hear what you have to say. Lord, just have your way. We are just happy to be able to clap our hands one more time. Stomp our feet, lift up our voices and shout hallelujah because you're worthy to be praised. These and all the many wonderful blessings we ask and we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus and all the people of God said amen. Amen. During this season of Advent, we shall sing a great hymn of our faith. As the congregation stands, we invite you to join with us as we sing the old rugged cross, a great hymn of our faith during this time of Advent and certainly Lent. Looking forward to Good Friday and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, celebration once again as Christians all across this world. Let's sing on a hill far away. On a hill. Thank you. 
church of God put their hands together and applauded the Lord because Christ Jesus has made it all possible. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. We'll have ministry music now from the Union Baptist Praise Singers, the Word of Life. This is 
We know him where we can spend eternity with him. And even now, we need him every day. And we need him every hour. It's time now to hear what God has to say through his word this morning. Turn with us to the book of Romans, chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Prayerfully, we come this morning. As we are standing in the sanctuary, those who are worshiping by live streaming may also stand in reverence to God's word. If you have your Bible, whatever translation, turn to chapter 3, Romans. And after we have read the key verses and prayed, we shall sing the hymn of preparation, Keep Me Every Day. Keep me every day. The key verses are verses 10 and 23. Verses 10 and 23. Let us read prayerfully key verses from the New Living Translation of the Scripture. Verse 10. As the Scriptures say, no one is righteous not even one. Verse 23, let us read prayerfully. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. This morning we want to preach prayerfully from the message, the righteousness of God through faith. The righteousness of God through faith. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Verse 10, key verse, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, the Father of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, the creator, maker of heaven and earth, the author and the perfecter of our faith, we thank you for another Lord's Day to celebrate once again the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, who rules and reigns even now. We acknowledge you, O oh Lord, humbly before you we come. And we ask, our Father, that you will pair all of our hearts as we are worshiping you to now hear what you are saying in your message this morning from the book of Romans, chapter 3. We ask, our Father, that you would take control of these mortal vessels of ours, that through these mortal vessels you will empower us and enable us and Fill us afresh with your spirit that we might, our Father, hear you and be attentive to your spirit as your spirit will speak into each of our lives and into our families and into our community and into our nation and into our world. Oh God, we need you in times like these. Your word is eternal and unchanging. Your word is what we need this morning all across our land and across our world. And Master, we just pray now that you will especially touch this vessel of mine, that my vessel may become a vessel fitted to thy use in every way, and that your word will go forth rightly divided, O oh God, that you will give us enabling power. You must increase and we must decrease. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, and may those who are listening, our Father, here in the sanctuary and those who are worshiping by live streaming, hear what you're saying, that we might understand the necessity of understanding 
oh God, that there is no one that is righteous, no, not one, but there is an answer. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus the Christ, and for his sake we all pray, and the church of God said amen. Amen. Keep me every day. Lord, I want to live for thee. the church said amen. Amen. Permit me properly to begin this message by lifting up the truth that the Apostle Paul states emphatically as we focus on the key verse, verse 10. I want to begin this message by noting that the Apostle Paul's assessment, assessment of the human condition is stated in Romans chapter 3 verse 10. From the King James translation of the Holy Scripture, we find his assessment in this manner. There is none righteous, no, not one. I want you to say that. There is none righteous, no, not one. From the Holman Christian Standard Bible translation, the same key verse, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one righteous, not even one. And from the New Living Translation, which we read uh, a few minutes ago, no one is righteous, not even one. No one. Uh, referring to the whole human race, uh, the condition of our human race, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. The Eugene H. Peterson translation, it is important to note uh, the words of our key verse, specifically and in, text with, and in context with verses 9 through 20. As you're looking in your Bible in the translation you have, 
If you don't have the Peterson's translation, the message, please prayerfully listen. Uh, under the title, we, all, we are all in the same sinking boat. Uh, the translation records, beginning with verse 9, so where does that put us? Do we Jews get a better break than the others? Not really. Uh, basically, all of us, whether insiders or outsiders, the Apostle Paul, who is writing to the church at Rome made up of Gentiles and Jews, he notes whether insiders or outsiders start out in identical conditions, which is to say we all start out as sinners. Scripture leaves no doubt about it. There is nobody living right, not even one. Nobody knows the score. Nobody alert for God. They've all taken the wrong turn. They've all wandered down blind alleys. No one's living right. I can't find a single one. Verse 13, their throats are gaping graves, their tongues slick as mudslides. Every word they speak is king with poison. Verse 14, they open their mouths and pollute the air. Verse 15, they race for the honor of sinner of the year. Verse 16, litter the land with heartbreak and ruin. Verse 17, don't know the first thing about living with others. Verse 18, they never give God the time of day. Verse 19, that makes it clear, doesn't it? That whatever is written in these scriptures is not what God says about others, but to us to whom these scriptures were addressed in the first place. And it is clear enough, isn't it, that we are sinners every one of us in the same sinking boat with everybody else. Our involvement with God's revelation doesn't put us right with God. What it does is force us to face our complicity in every, everyone else's sin. Amen. Our complicity in everyone else's sin. This is the message to the church, to believers, not only in, at that time, but also in this generation, to both Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. Paul, again, says, no one is living right. I can't find a single one. Prayerfully, brothers and sisters, in considering this text this morning, it has been wisely said that Romans chapter 3 is a chapter that doesn't win friends. I want you to say that chapter three doesn't win friends. Nor does chapter three of Romans influence people as you're taking notes, amen. However, the words of Romans chapter three are absolute truth for every generation, including this generation and this present age in which we find ourselves living. Can I get a witness? And why is this so? It is because of the following reasons as you jot, jot them down. Number one, it's the word of God. Chapter three is the word of God. I want you to say chapter three is the word of God. Secondly, it is written by the apostle Paul from God's point of view. Hallelujah. And then thirdly, in Romans chapter three, in light of the righteousness of God, we humans are all sinners, complete failures. Amen. Amen. I want you to say that sinners, complete failures. Amen. Amen. In light of the righteousness of God. In light of the righteousness of God. Amen. And then fourthly, we have sin. A amen. And deserve judgment. But for the grace of God, can I get a witness this morning? Now, I want us to take note in focusing on our key verse, verse 23, the second key verse, it, which records the Apostle Paul writing in the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, these words, 
For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Amen. Dr. John MacArthur has profoundly, verse by verse, teach a Bible scholar internationally and nationally known. Amen. Amen. And, and respected. Amen. For his exegesis of the scripture. In, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, notes, uh, uh, he calls it, and he says this emphatically, uh, uh, sin is pervasive and sin is deadly. I want you to say that sin is pervasive and sin is deadly. Uh, MacArthur continues by noting, when the early church father Christostom remarked, I fear nothing but sin, he correctly identified sin as the greatest threat any person faces. Amen. Sin, brothers and sisters, mars all relationships people are involved in. Can I get a witness? Amen. With other people, with themselves, and most significantly, sin affects, amen, our relationship with Jehovah God. Elohim, the creator God. Can I get a witness? The one who has always been and always will be God, the Alpha and the Omega. Can I get a witness? Sin, he continues, causes suffering. It causes disease and death in the physical realm, and also it causes spiritual death, eternal separation from God, and a destiny in hell. Can I get a witness? Amen. Furthermore, because sin is so deadly, we need to carefully define it so we can understand and avoid it. And so with a pencil pen out again, perhaps listen. First of all, John 3 and 4 sums up the essence of sin when it says sin is lawlessness. I want you to say sin is lawlessness. And a whole lot of that is being manifested today across these United States. Can I get a witness? across the world. Can I get a witness? Lawlessness. Sin is refusing to obey God's law, God's word, if we want to use another synonym. God's word. Can I get a witness? The Bible. Can I get a witness? Amen. It, it is rejecting God's standards. It is in fact living as if God did not exist. Lord have mercy. Amen. First John 5 and 17, the Apostle Paul adds to his definition of sin, describing it as unrighteousness. James, in James chapter 4, verse 17, uh, defines sin as failing to do what, uh, what is good. And, and, and then the Apostle Paul in Romans 14, 23, defines it as a lack of faith. Sin is a lack of faith. A lack of faith. Sin is, brothers and sisters, the ultimate ultimate act of ingratitude, ungratefulness towards God. Are there any ungrateful people listening this morning and amen, here are live streaming, ungrateful to God? Amen, amen. God who richly supplies us with all of the things we enjoy and yes, all of the things we need. Can I get a witness? Sin pollutes the sinner prompting the Apostle Paul to, to refer to it as a defilement of the flesh and the spirit in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. As you're taking note, from which sinners are in desperate need of cleansing. I said sinners are in desperate need. I said desperate need of cleansing. Can I get a witness? No amount of human effort, however, uh, can cleanse a person of sin, it is noted. So, such self-effort is as futile as attempting to change the color of one's skin. According to Jeremiah, chapter 13, verse 23, only through the death, only, through the death of Jesus Christ, I want you to say that only, again, only, only through the death of Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice for sin, is forgiveness and cleansing from sin available. We need the cleansing blood and cleansing power of Jesus the Christ as never before. Can I get a witness? In a world where man has lost his way, can I get a witness? And we are 
picking up the speed to judgment by a God who is a, a God of justice and a God, a God of wrath. Can I get a witness? Somebody's praying with me this morning. Sin is the only thing that God hates. According to Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 4. And so must believers hate sin. Amen. The great Puritan writer, it is noted, Thomas Watson, uh, uh, has made uh, as a prerequisite for sanctification sin as, as, as a hatred for sin. Amen. A, a, a prerequisite for becoming set apart for God's great use. A prerequisite. What comes first if we want to be used by God in whatever manner from day to day? The prerequisite is a hatred for sin. I want you to say that a hatred for sin. Amen. And so I need to ask the question, do you hate sin? Proverbs 8 and 13 says, in order to have a relationship with the Lord, we must hate evil. I didn't say hate evil people. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? God loves a man and wants to save evil people. Can I get a witness? He wants to save everybody. His desire, Peter records, the apostle Peter, that none should perish. No, not one. But the question must be raised, does God, amen, do you hate sin? Do you hate evil? Have you grown and are you growing in that respect that you do not appreciate and, 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 and you do not, amen, endorse sin or even evil? But as a Christian, you recognize even in your humanity and as a believer born again, amen, that, 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 that sin left a crimson stain. But Jesus washed it on the cross of Calvary, made it white as snow. Men who are living in habitual sin have gained a pride and an arrogance that keeps them from seeing the evil of their ways. Many people are blind today to their own, to their own, their own selves and their evil ways. Sin is nothing to be proud of. I want you to say that sin is nothing to be proud of. Amen. The story is told of a certain man who used to come home drunk each night and he'd fall into bed with his clothes on and go to sleep and start snorting. Amen. His wife, it, it disturbed her. He would snore loudly all night long. His wife was losing so much sleep because of her husband coming home drunk, snoring, that he went to a doc. She went to a doctor and said, Doctor, I can't stand it any longer. What can I do to keep my husband from snoring? I'll pay you anything. The doctor told her that whenever her husband passed out and started snoring again, she was to take a ribbon tied around his nose. Amen. And his snoring would stop. Lord have mercy. That night, the next night, the husband came home drunk, he fell in bed as usual, his clothes on, passed out started snoring. The wife got up, pulled a blue ribbon from her dresser, tied it around his nose. Sure enough, the snoring stopped. The next morning, the wife woke up refreshed from a solid night of nothing but rest. Let the church say hallelujah. She asked her husband as he was awakening, where were you last night? The husband still fully clothed, looked in the mirror and seeing the blue ribbon tied around his nose says, I don't know where I was, but I must have won first prize. <laughs> Are there, brothers and sisters, sins in your life that you're immune to? Are there habits that are contrary to God's will that you become comfortable with? Are there 
transgressions and iniquities that are in your life, you know it's wrong. And you're proud of it, but you won't do anything about it. You hear the Savior call it, but you ignore his call because you're content and immune in your sinful ways. There are many Christians like that today, not just to say sinners, but there are Christians who still have strongholds. Can I get a witness in their life? Happy to get away with their sins. Amen. The question must be raised, what kind of changes do we need to make in our attitude today towards sin? Are we where God wants us to be? Are we where God wants us to be? Or, or, or is God, amen, has he turned up the heat? And now he's, he's he turned up the fire. And he's even shouting at us to quit our sinful and wicked ways. Can I get a witness? Him, this was right when, when it was written, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some others to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever, I said look ever, to Jesus. He has the power, can I get a witness? And he has the will to carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He's willing and ready to aid you. He will carry you through. Can I get a witness? Are there any baptized believers who are living letters that say, yes, God can carry you through? God can pick you up out of the mire, clay of sin, plant your feet on solid ground. We have a new walk, a new talk, a new outlook, a new attitude, a new conversation, a new language. And it's all Christ-centered and Christ-like. I want you to read with us now the text from chapter 3, verse 9 through 20. Amen. Please read with me from the New Living Translation, verses 9 through 20. And let's read together prayerfully. Well then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. Verse 10, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. Underline that. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. Read on. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Verse 14, their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Verse 16, destruction and misery always follows them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Obviously, the law applies to those whom it was given for. It's purpose to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. Verse 20, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. The Ten Commandments that the Jews were to covenant to keep. And Moses said, keep them if you want to prosper in your new land. Can I get a witness? And, and, and amen, the, 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 amen. And, and the word of God today is also like a mirror. From Genesis to Revelation, God will reveal himself to us. And God will reveal us to himself. Can I get a witness? Ray Stedman, in his devotional message on particular verses 19 and 20. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, 
through the law, we become conscious of our sin. He, 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 he timely and wisely and profoundly notes when you read the terrible description, brothers and sisters of the human race, as God sees it, it's almost impossible for us to believe that God is not going to say, enough, I'm going to wipe the whole human race out. If, if, if all he sees is wretchedness and misery and evil and deceit and hypocrisy and vulgarity and profanity and slander and all these things that are in every heart, everyone without exception, our natural instinct is to say, then God doesn't want us. But the amazing thing is he noted that across that kind of verse, we find the message of love, John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world, across all of that mess, across all of that evil, amen, iniquity is a transgression. For God <laughs> so loved the world, so loved the world. I would just say so loved the world that he gave. He has only begotten sons. And brothers and sisters of the New Testament, John chapter 3, these are the words of Jesus. These are not the Apostle John's words recorded. These are Jesus' words that God, amen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not, verse 17, his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed on the only begotten Son of God. The worst thing that can happen is noted is to be going down a road to an important destination and think you're on the right track and spend all that time necessary to get there, only to find that the road that you were on leads to a dead end. It peters out into nothingness. You, 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 you find you have been on the wrong track, and it's too late to go back. That was what happened. So God, in his loving kindness, has given us the law to keep us from taking a false path. Though the law condemns us, it is that very condemnation that makes us willing to listen so that we might find the right, right path, or as the Old Testament records, the old path that leads home. Paul says the law does three things to us in verses 19 and 20, Romans chapter 3. First, it stops our mouth. I want you to say that first, it stops our mouth. It stops us from talking. Some people talk so much they don't hear nothing. Can I get a witness? They don't hear what they need to hear. Can I get a witness? We, ha we have nothing to say. Paul says the law does three things. It stops our mouth. We have nothing to say. You can always tell someone is close to becoming a Christian when they shut up and stop arguing back with people. Self-righteous people always saying, but, but this, but that. Yes, but. Can I get a witness? Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. I, but I do this. I do that. Amen. But when we see the true meaning of the word, the law, the mouth is shut up. And thank God, when we shut up, we can hear God speaking and telling us, amen, truth from lies, right from wrong, what, what hate is and what love is. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? How to treat our fellow man rather than how we want to treat our fellow man. As we look more closely at our key verses, amen, verses 21 and our text, that is, verses 21 through 31, there are several truths we want you to jot down and remember. And, and I want you to take a pencil, pen out, and take down these, these truths. The first truth is in verse 21. 
And that truth is God's righteousness has been revealed in the Old Testament. God's righteousness has been revealed and was revealed in the Old Testament. I want you to say God's righteousness was revealed in the Old Testament. Read with me verse 21 from the New Living Translation of the Scripture. Well, amen. As you, as you focus now on that, path, on that Scripture, let's, let's read together. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. Amen. It has been noted that righteousness by faith, righteousness, brothers and sisters, in a person was a consistent, uh, if not totally understood and detailed theme of the Old Testament prophets. Paul is telling in this letter to the believers, Jews and Gentiles at Rome, whom he wishes to visit, uh, amen, that the gospel is the gospel that brings to fruition that righteousness from God, first proved by the law, then revealed by the prophets, the righteousness that can only come by faith, the righteousness that can only come by faith. Faith. And then secondly, in verses 22 through 24, uh, God's righteousness has been revealed through faith in Jesus Christ, a, the divine Son of God. Amen. It has been revealed. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's read verses 22 uh, uh, through 24 together from the New Living Translation of the Scripture. Uh, properly, let us read, and as we properly read, God will give us additional supernatural illumination. Let's read. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Stop there. That's a lot. But that's the truth, absolute truth. We are made right Righteous with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Let's read on. And this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are. Verse 23. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. God in his grace. Don't miss, miss that. The grace of God is, amen, is, is, is in action here. And it's always been in action. The love of God, the undeserved merits and love of God. His grace freely makes us right. Freely. You don't have to buy his grace. I wish I had a witness. Just accept his grace. Freely makes us right in his sight. Let's read on. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Let the church shout hallelujah. In his book, that most for his highest, Oswald Chambers comments on this subject of the riches of the destitute. The riches of the destitute. Being justified freely by grace. He notes, the gospel of the grace of God awakens an intense longing in human souls and an equally intense resentment because the truth that is revealed is not palatable or easy to swallow. There is a certain pride in people that causes them to give and give, but to come and accept a gift is another thing. I, I, he goes on to know, I, I will, they, they would say, I will give my life to martyrdom. I will dedicate my life to service. I will do anything but do not humiliate me to the level of most, amen, uh, 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 hellious, de hell-deserving sinner and tell me that all I have to do is accept the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. I don't want to be identified with the other folk. In other words, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen, amen. He continues, we have to realize that we cannot 
earn or win anything from God through our own efforts. We must either receive it as a gift or do without it. The greatest spiritual blessing we receive is when we come to the knowledge that we are destitute, bankrupt. Can I get a witness? Amen, amen. We are wiped out. I wish I had a praying church. Until we get there, our Lord is powerless. He can do nothing for us as long as we think we are sufficient in and of ourselves. I, that's what a lot of folks think. Don't, don't tell me nothing. Now. Hey, man, I got everything I need. Oh, do you really? Do you have Jesus in your life? If you did, you wouldn't be saying what you're saying. Chambers says we must enter into his kingdom through the door of destitution. You need to jot that down. The door of destitution. Amen. Desperateness. As long as we are rich, particularly that he is in the area of pride and independence, God can do nothing for us. It's only when we get hungry spiritually, hungry spiritually for God, that we receive his Holy Spirit. The gift of the essential nature of God is placed and made a man effective in us by the Holy Spirit. God imparts the spirit within us. He comes when we ask him to come in our life and he dwells within us. He takes up residency in us. He seals us until the day he claims us. And nobody, even Satan, cannot pluck us out of the hand of God. That's why Job could say, in all of his afflictions, though he slay me, Yet will I trust in him. In all my appointed time, I'm just going to wait until my change comes. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen. God imparts to us the quickening life of Jesus, making us truly alive. We're not alive until Jesus is in control. He can't be on the periphery. He can't be in the bleachers. He must be in the ball field. Amen. Hey, can I get a win? Playing life's game for us. He takes that which was beyond us and places it within us. And immediately once the beyond has become within, it rises up to the above. And we're lifted up into the kingdom where Jesus lives and why Jesus reigns according to John chapter 3, verse 5. Let the church say hallelujah. And thirdly, verses 25 through 26. The righteousness demonstrates, we find Paul saying to the believers in Rome and the believers of this generation, righteousness demonstrates God's justice. Righteousness demonstrates God's justice. I want you to say that God's justice. God's justice. <laughs> Thank God for God's justice. I said, thank God for God's justice. Can I get a witness? God is a just God. He's a good God. He can do anything but fail. He can move mountains. Do you believe that this morning? Mountains out our way, and we don't even know it because God is a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. He's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. He's a kind and true God. He's a dependable God. He's all that we need and more than that. Read with me verses 25 and 26 from the New Living Translation of the Scripture. And that God demonstrates his justice. Righteousness, uh, amen, demonstrates God's justice. Let's read together. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair, fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in time past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just. And he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let the church say hallelujah. 
praise his holy name. The late theologian Francis Schaeffer, illustrating God's justice to mankind. Amen. And that we, because of his justice, we are totally in debt to God. Had this, to say, had this to say, our faith has no saving value. Our religious good works, our moral good works, have no saving value because they are not perfect. I want to say they are not perfect. Uh, suffering has no saving value. We, we, have, we would have to suffer infinitely because we have sinned against an infinite God. And we being finite cannot suffer infinitely. Can I get a witness? The only thing in all of God's moral universe that has the power to save us is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Our faith merely accepts the gift. God justifies. He declares us not guilty. All of those who believe in him, he says you are not guilty now that you believed on the Son of God. Give God an applause this morning. Amen. Amen. If all of if this is true, and it is, then Schaefer closes his thoughts, amen, by noting certainly in the verse in verse 27 is truly an understatement. And so let's go to verse 27, the last tr truth, the fourth truth, which is inclusive of verses 27 through 31 of our text from Romans chapter 3. Amen. And we find when sinners are justified and declared not guilty by God and because of his amazing grace, uh, that, it's, that was poured out on Calvary and by his only begotten son. There can be no boasting. That's the key. The point that Paul is making to the believers then and today. There can be no boasting except in God and in God's righteousness. Can I get a witness? No boasting except in God. Hallelujah. In God's righteousness. Can I get a witness? Let's read together verses 27 through 31 from the New Living Translation. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. Verse 29, after all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. Verse 30, there's only one God. I want you to say that there's only one God. There's only one God. That's the message that the world needs to hear today. Can I get a witness? For all of these congregations and churches, hey man, there's only one God. These denominations and ways and means of rituals of worship, there's only one God. Let's read on. And he makes people right with himself only by faith, whether they are Jews or Gentiles. Verse 31, well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we really fulfill the law. Do we only, we really only then fulfill the law. I want us to note as I prepare to close, Paul's statement, if you look back at chapter 2, verse 28 and 29 of Romans, you'll find that there was a problem and Paul was like an attorney sharing in his own way of writing, amen, to Jews particularly and to Gentiles. And the Roman, Roman church was made up of mostly Gentiles, but there were Jewish Christians. Amen. And it was a message that every generation needed to hear, understand, and receive with joy. In, in Romans chapter 28, 29, from the New Living Translation, the Apostle Paul records these words of both God's judgment of sin and the Jews and the law which begins really the argument and the message of truth in chapter 2, verse 1. And I encourage you to go home and study it. But I want you to read with me, if you're able, verses 28 and 29, chapter 2. Amen, of Romans. And if you don't have that translation, just listen prayerfully. For you are not a true Jew just because you were born 
of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision. Verse 29, chapter 2 of Romans. No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law, but rather it is a change of heart produced by the Holy Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks to praise, seeks the praise from God, not praise from people, not praise from people, but praise from God. Don't you know that's what we're going to be doing when we all get to heaven? Can I get a witness? God's children will be one family. Can I get a witness? From ages past to the present and ages, centuries of years to come. When we all get to heaven. Amen. And when the time dispensation as we know it will be no more. When the church will have been raptured. And the seven years of prophecy of tribulation and great tribulation will have passed. And when Satan will have fought in a moment in a twinkle of an eye, the final battle that the Lord God will, amen, take care of, cast him and the demons into the pit of hell. And all of those angels, demons that followed Satan, can I get a witness? Dismissed from heaven according to the record of Isaiah. And when all of those who refuse to accept Christ as their Savior end up in hell, can I get a witness? And when Jesus will have, amen, amen, with the new Jerusalem descended, amen, down, uh, amen, to a level above the new earth. <laughs> because new Jerusalem will be the capital city of heaven. Can I get a witness? and the new earth, and we will have freedom like we've never ever could, e could even imagine. For the Bible says we will reign with him. Do you believe that, church? God does not lie. We shall reign with him throughout all, all, all eternity. When we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day. You can put a pin there. You can put a period there. You can put an exclamation there. We know night, but Jesus is light. He's not darkness. Can I get a witness? What a day of rejoicing that will be. Can I get a witness, Pastor? You're saying there will be no more sleep. We won't have to sleep. Can I get a witness? What a day of rejoicing. That will be, oh Lord, have mercy. When we all, when we all, from the east and west, north and south, when we all see Jesus in his glorified bodies, we having our own glorified bodies, amen, we will praise him and we will sing and shout throughout all eternity and reign with him and we'll shout victory. I say victory. Victory. In a land of no more tears. In a land of no more sickness. In a land of no more sorrow. In a land of no more hate. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, in a land of no more hunger. Uh, in a land where there's no more disease. Uh, in a land... Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, uh, where the focus uh, will be on Jesus. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, in a land uh, where we'll never grow old, uh, we'll sing uh, and shout. Uh, 
uh, victory. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, we'll be able uh, to celebrate uh, what the Lord has done uh, for sinners. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and if he permits us, uh, I believe we will sing this hymn. Uh, Amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved uh, a wretch uh, like me. Uh, I once was lost. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, now I'm found. Uh, was blind, uh, but now I see. Uh, through through many dangers, uh, toils, and snares, I have already come. Uh, it was grace. Uh, grace. Uh, God's grace. Uh, God's unmerited grace uh, that brought us uh, safe thus far. Uh, and in heaven uh, we'll rejoice. Uh, glory uh, to the Lamb of God. Uh, glory uh, to the omnipotent God. Uh, the whole earth uh, is full of your glory. Uh, holy, uh, holy, holy, uh, Lord God Almighty. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, we'll be dancing, uh, shouting. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, no more arthritis. Uh, no more sugar diabetes. Uh, no more high blood pressure. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, glory, uh, glory, uh, glory, uh, glory. Uh, we serve uh, a risen Savior. Uh, Christ died, uh, shed his blood, uh, paid the ransom note, uh, cancel our sin debt, uh, that whosoever uh, believeth in him uh, shall celebrate, uh, celebrate uh, when we all uh, get to heaven. Uh, can you say glory? because salvation is free. It's free. I don't care what your financial situation is. You can receive the free gift of eternal life. Whether you're rich or poor, whether you have much I have very little. Salvation in Christ is free. It comes by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. It comes with a resolve. It comes with the surrendering of your will. It comes by turning over the keys to every asset you have, every property you own, every car you drive, even your safe deposit box, turning it over to Jesus and saying, you're the landlord, I'm the tenant. You're the owner, I'm your child. You're my heavenly father, I'm your servant. I'm glad to be a slave of yours. I love you with all my heart because I know the best is up ahead. Don't you know that church? The best, the best. James says, eyes have not seen, ears heard, nor has it even entered into our mind what God has prepared. As the choir is singing, the invitation to Christian discipleship is being extended. The 
veil in the temple was rent in two, opening up the Holy of Holies when Christ died. God gave his approval that his son died and that he shed the blood that was necessary to cancel all humankind's sin death. The earth began to quake. The Bible says even some of the dead saints got about the graves of Jerusalem. They began to walk toward the city of Jerusalem. That's the power of the supernatural God and Savior we serve. Nothing is impossible with God. All things that are in His will are possible. If you only surrender, give your will to God. By faith, you're saved. Ephesians 2 8 and 9. By grace, you're saved through faith. Not of yourself, it's a gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should Confess and believe. God. In this country, in this world, Jesus, nobody else but Jesus the Christ. No greater love will you find. Christ can break that chain and break that stronghold. You think you can't be made over again? Oh, yes. God can crush you and pick up the truth in your broken life. The devil With tell you you got time. He's a liar from the beginning. You come on the authority of his word. He says, I'll come. If you open up your heart, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. God does not come to visit us. He comes to live in us and to take us one day into his glorious presence. Our soul is valuable to him. And he's going to make us a new body that will never grow old. Praise his holy name. That will unite again with our soul. We shall live and have the capacity to live freely as Jesus. Yes, the body may resurrection I'm speaking of. God bless you. Tomorrow, Monday, is not promise. You need to make that decision now. God help you. God help us all. If you backslid, come home. Come back to Jesus. Come back to your church. Come back to your fellowship. And for all believers, it's time as never before to testify. Use your phone. Use your cell phone. Text. Let people know wherever you go, closest to wherever. Jesus Christ is the answer. Nobody but him. Pray for our leaders, but everyone must follow Christ, because God says, without me, you can do nothing. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you for your word. May your spirit have his way. May your spirit, Holy Spirit, have his way. We love you, Lord. We love you. May your people make that decisions as you are leading them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
the church of Jesus Christ exalts your name, Jesus. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. Praise God from all blessings. Praise him. All creatures here below. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend and heal of the Lord or who shall stand in holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Not lifted up his soul of the vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your hands, O gates, and even lift them up. The everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. In the name of God the Father. Amen. And in the name of God the Son. Amen. And in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh Lord our God. How excellent is thy name. In all the earth. Yes. Amen. Amen.